America is largely a nation of immigrants, and every family has a story to tell. Your family story is out there, but it's hidden in bits of evidence found in family Bibles, small-town courthouses, historical newspapers, and in the minds of the elders. There are dozens of types of documents you will come across in your research, and they are all designed to tell certain aspects of someone's life story. There is one bit of genealogical evidence that contains a little more personalized information, however, and it's one of the most valuable documents you can find, if you can find it. I'm talking about obituaries. I'm Brandy with the Gwinnett County Public Library, and today we're going to talk about how to locate and use historical obituaries in your genealogical research. We've all seen the obituaries we can find in the papers and online today, but do you realize how much we can glean from these usually short editorial snapshots of a person's life? This is information we can use in our search for our family story. Let's take a look at an historical obituary and see what kinds of genealogical information they can contain and how we can use what they tell us to further our research efforts. To make keeping up with my information easier, I like to use an obituary worksheet and extraction form. This is just a form I found through doing a quick Google search for free obituary extraction form. A blank piece of paper works just as well. I use these forms so that I don't forget any pertinent information. While we go through this, be thinking of a relative for which you would like to find an obituary. Your grandmother, great-grandfather, an aunt you loved as a child, it could be anyone. Take a moment and think about everything you know about them. Write down their name, the places they lived, approximately when they died, and any other information you can think of. If you don't know any of this information, ask your relatives, particularly the older members of your family. The person I'm looking for is Simon Yen, my third great-grandfather. I don't know much about him except his name, where I think he lived, and the names of his wife, Josephine, and one of his children, Henrietta, my second great-grandmother. This is information that I got from my family and from previous research I've done. I was able to find Simon Yen's obituary in the South Bend, Indiana Tribune for Monday, August 15, 1910. We'll discuss how I found this obituary in a bit, but for now, let's take a look at it and see what we can find out about Simon Yen's life. The first thing we should do is write down where we found this obituary on our form or whatever you're using to keep track of your research. We can get some basic information from looking at just the headline. It has his name, that he was of an advanced age, that he was the former treasurer, city alderman, a respected merchant, and that he passed after a protracted illness. At this point, all we can really add to our extraction form with any certainty is his name, which we already knew, but we'll record that anyway. In this portion of the obituary, you see the subject's name reiterated, his occupations, his age, when he passed, and the name of one of his children, a son, Frank. So I'm going to fill in my form with this information. I filled in his age, one of his surviving children, and I can even surmise the date of death from this. If he passed on Saturday, as the article states, and he was written on Monday, as the papers dated, then Simon Yen passed on Saturday, August 13, 1910. Here we have some information about Simon's illness and his death. He had been ill for approximately six months due to a stroke and had spent his final days unconscious we can add this information to our extraction form. Here we are given Simon's birth date and location, and we now know his age when he came to America. Reading further, we see that from Germany, the Yen family settled in Ohio, and in his early years, Simon worked as a teacher and as a mason with his father. I'll add this to my form. It looks like he married Josephine Roth in 1862 in Louisville. Is that Louisville, Kentucky, or Louisville, Ohio? We'll have to look into that. Soon after they got married, the couple moved to Mishawaka, Indiana, where Simon owned two grocery stores and became a fairly successful businessman. I need to add this information to my form. From these few paragraphs, we have learned Josephine's maiden name and the years he spent in Ohio, 1845 to 1862. We can now start looking at Ohio records not only for evidence of Simon, but of the Roth family as well. Surviving relatives are listed here, his wife and children, where they live, and even their professions. I can add these now to my extraction form. 
Let's take a moment to talk about some problems you can encounter when locating obituaries. Here we find a minor error. I know this is incorrect because my previous research has been consistently different. Notice that this refers here to Mrs. August Herzog, wife of Mayor Herzog of Mishawaka. Most of that is correct. However, Mrs. Herzog is the wife of John August Herzog, who is always referred to in the paper that way, not as August. August Herzog Sr. was the mayor's father, and August Herzog Jr. was his brother, and we don't want to confuse these men. So we need to always make sure that we compare the information we find in the obituary against our other research. Newspapers get information wrong all the time, so we need to make sure that we note this error on our form. This next section talks about who Simon was in his community. He was a staunch supporter of the Democratic Party. He was elected to be the county treasurer during the years of 1893 to 1895. He also at one time served on the town board of Mishawaka. I'll add this to my form. This final section talks about the funeral arrangements. We can see here the date, time, and location of the viewing and of the funeral itself. Its location at St. Joseph's Catholic Church gives us a hint at Simon's religious affiliation. This also tells us that his son, the Reverend Simon Yen, officiated his final mass, assisted by Reverend L. A. Minch. I'll add this information to my form and consider it completed. We started with a name, a location, and the names of a couple of relatives, and located an obituary that yielded his name, birth date, his death date, occupations, religion, civil service, immigration age and year, a number of family members, their locations, and even their occupations. I can now take these facts and launch new avenues of research into Ohio records and in the cities where the other family members lived. I can also use this data to find further information in the U.S. Census, vital records, immigration records, and more. But like I said before, remember not to take what you read as absolute truth. Always check your facts against other records to make sure you're getting the most accurate information available. Now normally, it would be best to have a name, an approximate date of death, the location of death, and from that location you can generally find what newspaper serviced that area at that time. As a librarian, my first instinct was to check out the local library in Mishawaka, Indiana, where I knew Simon lived. So I went to Google and did a quick search for what library serves that town and was directed to the St. Joseph County Public Library. Perusing their website to see if they had any genealogical materials online, I stumbled upon a searchable index of local obituaries. What a find! If you are not so lucky as to find that your relative's local library has such an index, you can try to look elsewhere to find it. One of the most comprehensive websites I have found is deathindexes.com. You simply choose a state and look for the county and see if there are any obituary indexes for that area. Here you can see that for St. Joseph County, Indiana, where Simon Yen lived, there is the library's index I used to locate the obituary we're using here. I simply typed in the name Simon Yen and suddenly I was presented with three options for his obituary. One in a paper called The New Era and two in the South Bend Tribune. From here, I have a few options. One thing I could do is put in a research request with the St. Joseph County Public Library with the specific information that I've just discovered. But before I do that, I want to see if I can get a more expedient solution to my problem. Maybe I can find a digitized version of this paper online somewhere. There are dozens of sites, both free and subscription, that host digitized newspapers. It's time to start hunting down the articles we're looking for. Here I've listed just a few to give you some ideas of where to begin. First, I went to the Google Newspaper Project to no avail. Then I was sure I would find it at the Library of Congress's Chronicling America website. No soap there either. Those are the two big free sites, so where do I go from here? Wait a minute. I know that Georgia has a historical newspaper project where libraries in the state offer up their local newspapers for digitization and hosting on a central site, the Digital Library of Georgia. Maybe Indiana has the same thing. So off to Google I went to search for some sort of digital library of Indiana. Lo and behold, I found the Hoosier State Chronicles. I typed in my search for the South Bend Tribune, thinking surely I'd have to hit pay dirt here, and nothing. My next step was to see what I could find on sites like Ancestry.com. Normally, Ancestry is a subscription site, but GCPL offers the library version to cardholders for free. So I went to the library's website and I navigated my way to Ancestry. Would you believe I had no luck there either? 
This search has taken me to a point where I think I'm going to have to resort to a subscription site. Newspapers.com and NewspaperArchives.com are both subscription sites that for a small fee, you can browse, clip, copy, and save digitized newspapers. My only question is, do they carry that paper? It wasn't looking good. So I navigated to Newspapers.com and did a quick search before I paid any money to see if they carried the South Bend Tribune or the New Era. Eureka! The South Bend Tribune it was. No New Era, but that's okay. I signed up for a free seven-day trial for newspapers.com and got not only my obituary I was seeking, but several other articles about Simon and his family. Altogether, it took about an hour to find this information. So now you have some insight on how to find obituaries. Take that person you were thinking about earlier and start a little search of your own. If your family is from around the Gwinnett County area and you're looking for an obituary, stop by the Collins Hill branch and browse through our microfilm collections of the periodicals listed here. We also take research requests online if you're not from the area. If you are looking for more information on using newspapers in your genealogical research or on genealogical research in general, come by one of the 15 branches of the Gwinnett County Public Library and check out these or a variety of other titles we have available. Thanks, and happy hunting!